Ah, let's just take a breath together as we just move into this part of our service. The theme for the month is the compassion connection, the compassion connection. And that's what we're talking about this month, compassion. That, 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 that quality that, that Ernest Holmes refers to as the gentlest virtue. And it's also the strongest virtue, that of compassion. The emotional response we have to perceive suffering and the authentic desire to do something about it, to relieve the suffering that we see. And uh, so, so compassion shows up in so many ways and, it, and it's a call. There's a call from compassion in every aspect of our lives. And so today we're looking at the connection of compassion to fear. The topic today is the contagion of fear, the contagion of fear. And as the reading said, fear is as contagious as catching a cold. We can catch, we can catch, catch fear from others and others can catch fear from us. When we are together, there, there, there's something that happens uh, in, in the race mind and race consciousness. There's something that happens that that's, that's, that's almost an unconscious emotional response that we have. There's an energetic response that we have that just sends off those vibes that, that fear, it just becomes a contagion. It, it's communicated, it's spread from one person to another, from, from one community to another. And it, it's also spread within ourselves within ourselves, you know, it's, we, we just aren't talking fear outside, external fear, because once we are dealing with fear within ourselves, then it just sparks more and more fear about one thing after another, one thing after another, one thing after another, one thing after another. And before we know it, we are filled with fear. We're filled with fear. And so I think that what we really want to do today is to examine just how, what fear looks like, how we experience it, and then what to do about it. So let's just let's just take a breath together. We just 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 recognize that we learn fear in all in, in, in childhood, really, but in all areas of our lives. We learn it in childhood from our parents, from our schools, from our churches, from our friends, from the community. There's just so much that happens that 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 just teaches us fear from the time we almost from the time we enter this plane. And so what we do is we walk around with so much of it as a part of who we are, as a part of our consciousness, as a part of our, our makeup, that we don't even recognize that we are operating in fear. We don't even recognize that, that fear motivates many of our actions, that fear uh, informs many of our decisions, that fear holds us back from living our lives fully and completely. And so what we, are, uh, what we want to just recognize today is that there is the existence of fear, and then there's the existence of more than fear, of, of, of living life without it, living life without fear, living life without fear. And that's not, that sounds easy, and it is not. It is not. It is, it's simple, but it's not easy. And so Ernest Holmes talks about fear being the negative use of faith, because sometimes we have more faith in the fear than we do in what we do, what we really would like to experience. We have more faith in the fear than we, than, than we have in, in God itself. We have more faith, faith in fear than we do in anything. And someone said that the, that the biggest crisis that we face is fear, because, because in fear, we begin to believe in the reality of the crisis. In fear, we begin to, 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 to believe in the reality of the crisis, whereas in faith, we turn to that which is real. And so what we want to do is to look at what, what, what's happening with, with us when we go through these times of fear, when we go through these times of anxieties, when we go through these times of, 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 of situations that come up that, that are beyond our control, which most of them are, but we don't recognize that they are. But, but the whole thing about fear is it's, it's really when we are dealing with the unknown. There are so many things that bring fear into our lives when we're dealing with the unknown. We don't know what's gonna happen next. We don't know whether, whether we're gonna get that job that we applied for. We don't know what the diagnosis is gonna be. We don't know what, what's gonna happen as we go down the road. We don't know what's gonna happen with, with the economy. We don't know what's gonna happen with so many things in our lives today. And the truth is that we've never known, but we always thought that we did. We always had some kind of comfort as we look back, we thought that we knew, but we really didn't. So looking forward to the, to the unknown, we move into that place of clutching, into that place of anxiety, into that place of, of, of holding on, into that place of, of, of closing our hearts, 
into that place of just pure and simple fear. And so Ernest Holmes says that if we are dealing with fear, if we are uh, 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 walking around fearful, that there's a method for getting rid of that. There's a method for, 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 for releasing it, for, for living our lives fully and, and living our lives completely. And I think that it's really worth us taking a look at. It's really worth us, us, us really considering because as I said before, fear can hold us back in so many ways. I, I have a lot of fears in my life. I have had a lot of fears in my life. I've gone through a lot of, of times of fear. And some of them, I want to say some of them are have been irrational, but I'm not sure that there's there's very much fear that is rational. I think that 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 most fear is irrational. Of course, it's rational to be fear, fearful of of a hurricane or a storm if you can't get out of it or, 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 or some life-threatening thing that, that we can't get out of and, and, and that, that we are faced with immediately. But when we can go through the steps of just dealing with it, then we can begin to open up and to release and to let go and to really turn to that one power, that one presence, that one life that is within us that is always right where we are and just be able to release and let go of that fear that we're holding on to. And so Ernest Holmes says that that what we the, that we should develop a method, and this is the method that he gave us to just deal with fear that we are uh, experiencing as we go through our lives. And he said the first thing that we should do is to not harbor that fear, not hold on to it and try to hide it from everybody and pretend it doesn't exist. That, that what we need to do is to be able to express it to someone, to find a, 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 a close friend or a, a confidant that we can really share our fear with, someone that we can really turn it over to, someone we can share it with, someone that we can open up our, our heart and our soul to and just explain to them what we are feeling, what we are experiencing, how fearful we are. Because that, that person that we're talking to can help us to walk through, it can help us to see that, that what we are dealing with is not true or help us to analyze it or help us to, to really walk through it, help us to really take it apart break it apart and really look at uh, what's what's happening and, wh and what we are feeling fearful about. And, you know, one of the first things that we do when we're afraid is to close down. We don't want to tell anybody. We don't want anybody to know that we are afraid because, first of all, we think that somebody might judge us. Somebody might feel like, well, that's silly for you to be afraid of that. Or, or we start to feel that way about ourselves that well I should we have that should what I call the should blanket. Those of you who've taken classes with me know that that there what, what I call is the should blanket. Anytime we start talking about uh, thinking about what we should do or what we should not do, I say that there's a blanket called the should blanket that we wear that that's 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 cloaked around us, saying that you shouldn't be afraid of this, you shouldn't be afraid of that, or you should have faith. And you know what? Maybe we should, but we don't. And so the thing for us to recognize is that because we are dealing with fear, let's share it with somebody. Holmes is saying that find a trust, trusted friend or confidant that you can share it with, someone that you can tell, pour out your heart to, pour out your soul to. That may be a practitioner that you go to, to see, to really talk about what's happening with you. What are you afraid of? What, what, what's, what's holding you back? What has you staying awake at night? and really be able to share that and have someone help you to analyze it and help you to really dissect it and take it apart and really see what's going on. And that begins to open a space, create a space for us to release some of the fear, for us to be able to release some of the fear. And so the second thing Holmes says that we need to do is to face our fears. We need to face our fears. And really look at them, really, 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 again, we look at them when we tell somebody else about them, but we don't face them in the same kind of way when we, when we are alone, when we are dealing with it ourselves. Uh, Pima Children calls that developing an intimacy with fear. She says that we, we need to develop an intimacy with fear. Get to know our fear. Get to know what's got you fearful, whatever it is that you're being fearful about. Whatever it is that, that, that has you awake at night, whatever it is that's on your mind all the time, and even if it's not on your conscious mind, you can feel it in the back of your mind. Whatever it is that, that, that you are feeling really scared about, face that. Develop an intimacy with it. Look it in the face. And she says that nobody ever tells us to, to, to not, uh, not to run away from fear. 
Nobody ever tells us not to run away from fear. Nobody ever tells us to stay here and look at it. Because what we do when we, the first thing we do when fear comes up is we try to avoid it. We try to distract ourselves from it. And there are many ways that we distract our, ourselves from it. That's sometimes by drinking, sometimes by eating, sometimes by, my, my favorite way is shopping, sometimes by, by doing uh, all kinds of things that will distract us, that will get our attention someplace else. But the fear is still there. It's still blocking, it's still, it's still holding us back. It is still impacting our lives and it is still creating that energy that, that influences other people. That's how, that's how we pass it on to somebody else. And so what, what we need to do is to develop an intimacy with it, be willing to stay with it, be willing to be with it, be willing to really look at it, no matter how, how scared you may be, no matter how, how uncomfortable you may feel. Just being willing to look at it and to admit that this is what I'm feeling, this is what I'm experiencing. This is, and, and, and when we are really developing an intimacy with it, how does, where do I feel it in my body? How, what, how, do, how am I responding? How am I reacting? Is it making me more impatient? Is it making me more irritable? Is it making me uh, uh, go into hiding? Is it making me move into denial? Just, just what is what is happening right now? What is happening with me right now as I go through this fear, as I go through this time of fear? And you know, facing fear and developing intimacy with it can be really, really, really scary. It can be really, really, really scary because sometimes we feel when we're dealing with it that we're all alone. That's why it's good to have a friend that we share it with because, it, because in, in fear, we are so used to, to internalizing it and we're so used to pretending it doesn't exist that we, we bury it and we are feeling alone. But you know that what fear does, it separates. What fear does, it makes us, uh, uh, us, us feel that we are separate from God. It really, it really, because when we, are, when we are in fear, we are feeling separate from God. When we, are, we are, when we are in fear, we are really being in that place where we are not allowing ourselves to, to recognize that that power and that presence of God, that one life, that one mind, that one being, the source of our being is always right where we are. We're not, that's not where we are when we're in fear. When we're in fear, we are in a place of separation. And so uh, developing an intimacy with it and really facing it, really acknowledging that this is what I'm feeling. And as I said, that when, when we are... Uh, uh, Fear is a learned behavior. When, when we learn fear, Holmes says that we can unlearn it. We can learn faith. We can learn something different. And it comes from so many different places. I think about, I'm reminded of when, when, I, was, when I was a child, when I was a younger person, a child, and then growing up, I would, my biggest fear, one of my biggest fears was of death and dying. Not dying myself, but of, of other people dying people around me dying. I was afraid of death. I was afraid of, of uh, people who had died thinking that they could come back. I grew up in, 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 in a house that was directly across the street from a, a cemetery that was a block square. And uh, as children, we heard all kinds of stories about that cemetery, about the people who were buried there, about people who were going to get up and come back at night. Uh, and, and, and knock on the door. And there were old people who would tell us all kinds of stories about the people in the cemetery. And particularly if there had been a funeral out, uh, a burial th th that day, then I would, I would be petrified at night because I was afraid that the people were gonna get up and come over and come over in, into our house. And my mother used to, my mother was a very logical person. And she used to say, don't you know that if those people would get up, they would go home, they would not come over here. They would not come over here to see you. They wouldn't do anything but go home. So it doesn't make sense for you to be afraid of someone who has died, who someone who was in that cemetery. And I had a, a foster sister who lived with us who was older than I. And as soon as mom would stop saying that and go back to her room, my sister would say, yeah, but they're going to stop by here first and knock on the door and get a glass of water or something. And that would just, just scare the bejeebies out of me. And I, I, was, I lived in that fear so much. And and, and as I said, we hear all kinds of stories about the cemetery. We hear so many stories about people who came back after they died. So many, so many things that we would hear uh, living there in Alabama <laughs> in the South. And I remember one night my sister and I had gone up to, to see someone who lived about a half block up the street from where we lived. And we were coming back home at, it was dark. And as we were coming down the hill, just before we got to our driveway, our next door neighbor 
jumped out from behind a, a tombstone with a sheet covering him. And we nearly lost our minds. He jumped out and said, boo, and came out with the sheet on. Well, I can't tell you how scary that was for us and how it reinforced my fear of that cemetery. It reinforced my fear of, of death and dying. It reinforced my fear of people who died or that people could come back. Even though I knew who it was who did that, it still, as a child, it still had a great, great impact on me. So I went through my life just feeling this fear about death and dying and people who had died. And lo and behold, when I stopped practicing law and this, the first job I got when I moved back to California was to be a hospice chaplain. Now I thought that the universe had to have a really great sense of humor for me to be uh, employed as a hospice chaplain. And I was afraid of death and dying and I was afraid of people who die. But you know what that did? Spirit put me in that place where I had to really face my fear. I had to really develop an intimacy with fear. One of the greatest fears I had was that I was going to be sitting with someone or, or, or ministering to someone and they were going to pass away. I don't know what I thought was going to happen, but I, that was a great fear of mine. But I had to live with that. I had to face that. I had to be with that. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy at all. I had to I had to really breathe my way through it. I had to do the, 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 the prayer work that I knew to do. I had to do affirmations. I had to do everything. And I still had fear about it. But but the, the fact was there was no way I could run away from it. And so that's what what that that developing an intimacy with fear can can be about for each of us. Developing an intimacy with it, knowing that it exists and 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 and, and just being with it and being willing to walk through it anyway being willing to walk through it anyway. That's what we have to do. The third thing that, that Holmes says that we do is to, to remember and to, and, and to convince ourselves that there's a power greater than we are who put us here. And that power that's greater than, our, than, than we are put us here, that's the power that we can turn to. When we're feeling fear, when we're experiencing uh, uh, whatever the fear may be, knowing that that power and that presence that is greater than we are, is there, then we can turn to that. We can lay down our fears and turn to that power within. We can lay down our fears and know that God is in the midst of everything that's going on. God is in the midst of this situation that I'm experiencing right now. God is in the midst of, of, of whatever we may name it, whatever we may name it, whatever we may name that fear, whatever it is that we are afraid of, God is in the midst of it. God is right there. God is, God, God is greater than whatever the fear is. God is greater than whatever the fear is. And when we come back to remember that and remember that we can turn within to that power, turn within to that presence and let go of our, 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 our fear, let go of our anxiety, let go of our, our conflicts, let go of, of, of whatever it is that we're holding on to, then we can, we can turn that over. Then it begins to release and relieve us from the pressure of the fear, it begins to relieve us from that sense of separation. It begins to move us, move us into that place of unity. It moves us into that place of oneness. It moves us into remembering who we are, remembering who we are, and most importantly, remembering who God is. Remembering who God is and remembering that God is in the midst of this. God is in the midst of even this, whatever it is whatever it is. And so when we do that, when we get to that place where we can take a breath, take a step back and just say, you know what, God, I'm turning this over to you. I'm turning this over to you. I'm trusting you and trusting that God is handling it, whatever it is, whatever the case may be. And so this is the way that, that we get into that place of just beginning to really let go of the fear. And when we turn it over to God, then we are moving into that place of faith. We're moving into that place of faith. And faith is, 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 is contagious, just as fear is contagious, so is faith. So is faith. And, we can, and the more faith that we have, the more contagious it becomes. The more faith that we have, the stronger it becomes. The more we could turn things over, even if we pick it up again. Just remember to turn it over again, no matter how many times we pick it back up, no matter how many times we move out of that fear and we think it's gone and we look up and lo and behold, here it is again. And you know what? 
we turn it over again and we keep turning it over again because each time that we are turning it over, each time that we are, 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 are return, turning it over, we're returning unto God. We're remembering who God is. We're remembering our relationship to God. We're remembering to move into oneness with the all that is. Whenever we turn it over, whenever we, we, we say, I, I, I take this off my, my plate and I put it on the altar of God, I turn it over to God. And I know that God is handling this, but I know that God is in the midst of everything that's going on. I know that God is the source of my life. And I know that God is taking care of everything. And when we can do that over and over and over again, it builds our trust muscle. It builds our faith muscle. It builds our, 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 our courage to release and to let go. And you know what it does? It also builds our compassion for ourselves. Because uh, uh, when we are in fear, oftentimes we judge ourselves. Oftentimes we judge ourselves again when we have that should blanket on. We should not be feeling fearful about this. That doesn't make sense. We should not. We should have more faith. I'm. I'm a practitioner. I'm a minister. I'm. I'm. I, I, I've been doing spiritual mind treatments a, a lot. I've been seeing a practitioner. Yes, you have, we've been doing all of that, and I'm still afraid. I'm still feeling fear. That's what we have to come to recognize. And when we keep turning it over and over and over and over and over again, keep turning it over to God, then we begin to recognize that we're getting stronger in our faith. We're getting stronger in our faith. And, the, and, the, and, and, and then we, we begin to have faith in our faith. We begin to have the faith of God itself as we move forward. And as we do that, then that's how the fear begins to dissipate. And that's how the contagion of fear begins to dissipate because then when we do that in one area, then all the fears that we pick up in other areas of our lives begin to dissipate also. They begin to dissipate also. And so I'm encouraging you to really begin to, to really be willing to release and to let it go, no matter what it is, no matter how big you think it is, no matter how little you think it is, whatever it is that you're fearful about, because there's no big or little in God that just God just is and always is available to us always is available to us, always is available to, 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 to be right there where we are, always, in whatever situation or circumstance we find ourselves in. And then finally, Holmes says that it's important for us to resurrect the little child within us, the little child within us that, 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 that had such faith and confidence in life itself before the experiences of life began to take over, began to cover them up for us to resurrect the little child and develop that, that faith that we had as little children, that we came in with as little children, that faith and that, that, that awareness of the presence of God and trusting that, that presence of God within us. And resurrecting that and then walking as though we know, walking as though, walking through life as though we know that that power and that presence is with us always, that that power and that presence is guarding us, is guiding us, is protecting us, is lifting us up, is loving us, is caring for us, is caring for us. And so this is what we have to do as we, as we, as we resurrect that little child, then we begin to really look at the language of fear and faith. The language of fear is what if, what if this happens? What if I get that diagnosis? What if I don't get that job? What if I don't have enough money? What if my car doesn't work? What if all the what ifs, that's the language of fear. But the language of faith is even if, even if, even if I get that diagnosis, God is in the midst of it. Even if I don't get that job, God is my source and God is taking care of me. God is, is the source of my life, even if my relationship doesn't work, even if whatever the case may be. We move from that place of fear, what if, to that place of faith, even if, even if. And when we move into that consciousness of even if, then we know that whatever happens, whatever happens, whatever happens, that God is right where we are that God is right where we are, that God is there from which we can never be separate, that God is the presence of God and the power of God is, 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 is that which never departs from us and from whose care that we can never depart. 
And so just remembering that to move into that place of even if, even if the worst thing that we think of, even the, if the worst thing that we fear happens, God is still right there, right where we are, right with us. So let's move from that even if, that, 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 that what if consciousness into that even if consciousness. And when we do that, we begin to get into that place where we can go to sleep at night, where we can rest easily. And even when the little, the, you know, the little, the, the little uh, um, things about fear that, that will still pop up from time to time, the, the different things will pop up because we are these spiritual beings having these human experiences. And as human beings, things come up. People say something. We hear something on the news. We, uh, thoughts go through, race conscious beliefs. All those things come into making up our experiences. And as we, as, as, as we, as we start to deal with those, then we just take a deep breath and say, oh, I forgot. I was, I was back into that what if. Let me just move back into even if. Even if whatever it is happens. Even if. That's where we want to be. That's where we want to be. And as we, as we really begin to practice this method that Holmes recommends, as we begin to go through this process, this is when we get to really practice as P, uh, Pima so. I'm sorry, Pima Children says, we begin to really practice unconditional compassion for ourselves. Unconditional compassion for ourselves. Imagine that, having unconditional compassion for ourselves. Imagine loving ourselves, caring for ourselves, accepting ourselves, being compassionate with ourselves, even when we're feeling afraid. Being willing to say, I'm feeling afraid and I know that God is in the midst of this. I'm feeling afraid and I know that God is right here with me. I'm feeling afraid and I know that my faith is building and it is stronger than anything that I can fear because I know that God is right here, that I am not walking this path alone. I'm feeling afraid and I know, and I know that even if the worst happens, God is, God is. And that's all we ever need to know, that God is, that God is. And so it starts with us. It starts with us. Holmes says that, that if fear happens in our own minds, that we have to be our own doctors. And that, that, that we have to be our own doctors by, by clarifying and purifying our own minds. And we purify our minds with thoughts of God and with the truth that we know about God, that God is always always, always right where we are, right where we are, right where we are, right here and right now. So let's turn within in this moment now, and just recognize, let's just recognize that as we take this breath together, that that one power, that one presence, that one life, that one mind, that one breath, that one activity, that is God is always, always, always right where we are. That that one life, that one power, that one presence is my very life. And it is the life of each one of us here this day. And so how grateful I am to have this opportunity to speak this word for each of us this day, speaking a word of faith, just knowing that the faith of God is ours right here and right now. And that as we stand in this faith, we release and let go of the fear. We let release and let go of the anxiety. We release and let go of the doubt. We release and let go of the conflicts. We release and let go of whatever it is that would hold us back from being in that place of oneness, from experiencing our oneness with the all that is. And as we release and let go, then all of the qualities of God are right where we are, that there's healing happening in body temples, there's wholeness revealing itself in every aspect of our lives. And I speak this word of wholeness for each one of us this day, knowing that where there is healing needed in the body temple, that the power and the presence of God is, and that every organ, cell, tissue, function of the body is responding to that radiant healing presence of God. And I know that wherever there appears to be lack of any kind, God is, God is. And that all needs are met, no matter what we name them, no matter what we call them, God shows up in our lives as our lives, as whatever it is we may need in any given moment. 
And I'm just knowing that where there is a need of peace or harmony or joy or love or balance, peace of mind, that God is showing up as whatever it is, whatever it is. And we are experiencing this in each and every aspect of our lives. I pause momentarily so that you may speak the names of anyone you'd like held in prayer this day. You may speak their names silently or loud, but you may speak them now. And so for all those whose names are spoken here this day, I know that God is right in the midst of every situation, every circumstance, everything that's going on in each and every life and that healing is happening everywhere. This word goes out to anyone on this planet needing a prayer this day, knowing that God is, God is. That's all we ever need to know that God is. Everywhere present, God is. And that wholeness is revealing itself everywhere. I speak a word of peace on this planet for anywhere that there's war and unrest, peace in Ukraine. I speak a word of forgiveness and compassion everywhere that is needed. I speak a word of joy for any place that that joy needs to be experienced, knowing that God is joy itself. And as our hearts are opened to love, our hearts are also open to joy being expressed everywhere and love being expressed everywhere and compassion being expressed everywhere. I simply say, thank you, Father, Mother God. Thank you, Father, Mother God, for everything. Thank you, Father, Mother God, for the word spoken and the perfect manifestation of the word spoken here this day. I know indeed that all is well. For I know indeed that all is God. And I simply allow it to be. And so it is.